Welcome back to Chat Shit. We're here doing one of our last previews for the 2024 AFL season. We're doing the West Coast Eagles today, so I don't think it'll be a very positive positive preview. Um, they're a team that in the last two seasons, in 45 matches of footy, has acquired five wins. Aiden, what's going on? Well, it's a team that really threw everything at their 2018 or a few years ago, that period like really going at the grand final where they or at a premiership where they traded away all their future picks and and it's costing them now where they're left with a really aging team and not a lot of draft picks obviously they had pick one from coming last um and they're hoping harley reed can turn the entire club around but i mean yeah five wins in the last two years not a lot of promise shown. I know you're going to tell us how many times they lost by 100 points. Yeah, five times last year, five, I think. Five times last year, losing by 100 points. I mean, they're going to hold on to the coach. They're going to back him in, I guess, when he's got the quality. Um, they know what he can do, as in he's a proven winner. But honestly, I can't see them getting more. At maximum, I can see is five wins this season. I can't see anything close to five wins, to be honest. Uh, we could harp on all podcasts about everything wrong with their list all the weaknesses the fact that even though they're supposedly a rebuilding team they actually have a relatively small amount of young talent um compared to other lists in the afl very small amount of young talent absolutely uh but we we could talk about that for days and that's well documented but the thing that's more more recent more recently um relevant is their choices in the draft you just mentioned harley reed there was a lot of discussion and a lot of people were of the opinion that they should trade that first pick with which they took Harley Reid to get potentially three high picks next uh, in the draft that just went by and maybe other picks for future drafts as well. Um, what do you think about that? Because in, when you're in a situation like West Coast is in right now, you could put prime three prime Gary Ablets on your team and it's not going to fix the team because you need to fix deficiencies all over the field. You can't just think a gun midfielder is going to fix everything. Well, I think they took an absolutely enormous risk. Do it take it do it with this with this pick here. It's also a guy that has said he doesn't want to be on your team. That's that's exactly where I was about to go. It's is Jason it, Horn Francis in the making. Ex- no, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. He's a guy that's openly said he doesn't want to play there. He's 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 a Melbourne guy. He's going to go to a Melbourne team in 2 years time when his contract's up. And they're just basically throwing away this draft class. I'd understand this pick if he was like a West Coast, a Western Australia through and through bloke who they talked to and he said, I'm here t- to turn this club around. Mm. Um, anything positive. That and doesn't seem to be the vibe. It doesn't seem to be the vibe at all. I'm really hoping for his sake he has a really great two years and, and maybe stays on for, for West Coast. But honestly, when when the option was there to maybe take pick three, pick four, and maybe like a pick 18, three first rounders to f- quicken up their rebuild, I'm extremely surprised they didn't take it. And I can't quite understand the reasons why they didn't take it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in terms of uh, going back further for West Coast decisions, what do you think about the fact that as you say, they really chased a premiership window, threw away a lot of uh, potential young talent and and development for experienced players that were going to give them, so, so they could invest in their experienced players. And then they ended up getting that 2018 premiership. Would you say that's worth it? Or say in another world where they didn't adv- invest in that window as much and they ended up just being a... Still, still a sixth to eighth team right now, potentially, or a sixth to tenth team. Would you say that that would have been a better outcome? Because the drub they're in right now could last a really long time. Well, I think that's going to really differ from fan to fan because mm. they're. I think they're one of the top three fan bases in the AFL. Yeah, and highest membership, aren't they? I they've been Ryan taken over. Yeah, I think Collingwood, Collingwood took just, them over just last because year. of the Collingwood success. Yeah, but as a team that that packs Optus every stadium, the fans keep turning out. There'd definitely be some people in there who would have said, oh, we're going to take the premiership, we're going to suffer through the hard times, we'll be back. But there's going to be other people who were just watching their team over the last two years, getting five wins, slowly, a very very clear drop-off after 2018, and not seeing any promise at the moment. I mean, we've said, I've said they'd be lucky to get to five wins. You said no chance to get to five wins. Just, I mean, if if as a Swans fan, if this is what the Swans had done, and I don't say I don't think they ever would do this, 
It's it. Swans have a very unique culture in that way, but we're not talking about the Swans. I know, but, but, but would you take a premiership for? I mean, they fin. I think they finished in the top eight in 2019. They finished, I think, 12th or 13th in in 2020, and then they had they had a few horrible years after that. I understand it's a really difficult. It's a really difficult one. The reason that I'd say that I would have taken it the other way is that you can still and I, and teams like Geelong and the Swans uh, and Collingwood for a large part of the 21st century have shown this, that you can develop in, uh, so, sorry, invest in young talent and uh, giving guys experience and keeping draft picks while also remaining competitive and giving yourself still chances to win premierships. And so you can still compete for premierships and not just copper, a, not just be a middling team, still compete for premierships and have that potential while not throwing away your future like, it seems West Coast did. Well, I'll tell you what, they got damn lucky to win the premiership as well. I remember <laughs> that. It was who who made that kick? Dom Sheed. Dom Sheed with the kick from the sideline against Collingwood. Um, I mean, good for them. They won it. I'm of the opinion I would have gone the other way. I would have said back in the success for, for long term success. And they still have a chance of winning the premiership like that. And then for the I think majority of fans might it might swing the other way though might say, we got the premiership, we're happy, we're going to suffer through the hard time, we'll be back. And honestly, that's a fair enough opinion. The elation of a premiership is something everyone uh, really completely wants. Completely fair enough. But they, they're they not without talent. I mean, Oscar Allen is a massive, yeah. huge, huge uh, talent in the forward line. Tom Barras, who we were begging to come, and at one point looked like he was coming to the Swans. We were desperate for desperate him. Desperate for him. Yep. Kelly is huge. And then they've got some guys who are aging, but they they're still um, still talented. Like Darling, for example, Elliot Yo, if he can stay healthy, Elliot and Yo, look, should Gaff but, can maybe give another year. I mean, he should have had a brown low a few years ago. If he hadn't, I think he got suspended for punching mm. someone. <laughs> Andrew but, Brayshaw. But yeah, it's it's going to be another disappointing year for for the West Coast Eagles. Yeah, they're gonna have to suffer through it. The decisions that have been made have been made. So if we're looking forward to the future, uh, they're gonna have to make do with what they've got, um, and. Who knows? Because something I've always observed with footy is you can talk all you want about the the names on the sheet of paper, but we really saw this with the Hawthorne side in the back half of the year last year, that it doesn't really matter how people might perceive the names on the, on paper. If you somehow develop a culture where everyone's playing for each other, everyone's playing hard, everyone's fit, then anyone could, any team can win any game of footy. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. When you when you ask guys who don't really watch much AFL, they just think it's a complete mess. And I agree, it is a complete to organized an mess. And a, a biggest thing a team can do, which is what I, I know I'm going to talk about the Swans, but they just give absolutely everything every game. And in AFL, when it's just a physical battle, a lot of the time, it's just win your 50-50s. Um, who can run more than the other team? Who can get to the ball quicker? If you absolutely give everything and all these guys are star athletes, there is a massive chance you could win games, exactly like you said with Hawthorne. They won games. Yeah, with, with, they beat did have Melbourne talent. and beat Collingwood exactly. in they, the last few rounds. They did of the have year. talent, but it's just you've got to have the belief. I mean, I don't know how they're going to get that belief, but you've got to have the belief that you can actually win games and then you can throw yourself at the ball. You've got to actually commit to winning the game, which is why all of us are big fans of Hawthorne and what they've done. Absolutely. Well,. Well, I think everyone's hoping that West Coast become a competitive team they are, uh, in this upcoming season. They're not obviously Not Freer fans. Not Freer fans. Yeah, they're loving it. Or Collingwood fans. True. There were obviously <laughs> chats last year that the it was detrimental to the league, the league's competitiveness because you had certain teams competing for finals that got to play West Coast twice True. and some that didn't. So I think everyone's hoping that they have a successful year this year relatively. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.